Hey, hey, hope you are having a wonderful day. We're just getting back to normal here in South Carolina. School is actually in session, just two hours delayed. And I'm sitting in my car, so I'm just going to do a short live stream because I only have uh, about 10, 15 minutes before I go into the hair salon to get the hair did. And um, so if you are stopping by and you're on the replay, tell me, hey, um, I um, wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, fear versus joy. And I'm going to share with you one of my favorite books and uh authors whose work really changed how I think about fear versus joy but I think in every little um, every little decision that we make the more that we can go with joy versus fear um, the better our outcome is going to be and the better we're going to sleep at night because the more aligned to our higher self our true self we're going to be so for me today, I'm a little bit nervous, honestly. I'm trying to coach myself through to get to the joy part because um, I'm getting ready to go into, I'm just waving at my um, hairdresser who's going by. I'm getting ready to go in to get my hair done. And so I've had this red um, for, I don't know, about six or seven months. And I really like it. But let me tell you the, the ugly truth about this hair. <laughs> and the ugly truth is that every time it gets wet it's like a murder scene okay like um my shower is stained red my pillowcases are stained red it stains everything red so it's really pretty it looks cool on my website pictures but um it is, I didn't realize that until recently <laughs> when I was thinking about changing my hair color that she, my hairdress, my um, hairdresser is using um, not permanent dye. So that it's not so damaging on my hair, but it also stains everything. Like I can't get in a pool or a hot tub. Well, people, I'm going to Tahiti. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm going to Tahiti next month. So I called up my hairdresser and was like, look, we got to we got to ixnay on this because I'm having major fear issues about, I want to go to Tahiti. I want to be in the ocean. I'm going to be in the hot tub. I'm going to be in the pools, right? I'm going to be at these really fancy resorts. I do not want to stain everything red that they have, especially I, you're not getting to believe this. I ended up starting traveling with like a black or a dark blue towel that I would put over the pillow when I sleep in a hotel because I didn't want to stain their pillowcase and to use it to wash and dry my hair in a hotel because I don't know. I just feel really embarrassing embarrassed to like stain their stuff so I was like this is like no longer a joy filled hair thing for me like I like the color but I, I don't want to stain everything like it's not such a big deal if it's in my house but if it's um out in the world and you know I'm going on this trip that I've been dreaming of for a really long time to go to Tahiti and I do not want to leave trails of red dye everywhere I go in Tahiti so um I told her I was like something got to happen we got we got to make a change and so um I first thought I would go with kind of a, a silver hair a real light hair and she was like um not unless you want your hair to fall out girl so <laughs> and she also told me that process would take six months I'm going to Tahiti in January like in 28 days I am going to Tahiti so I needed something done and we just played with different things and the ultimate result that we have that we're going to do is um, she's going to go in and remove all the red dye, bleach my hair and put on permanent red dye. So my hair, I don't know exactly what color it's going to be, but it'll probably be something similar, but it won't bleed everywhere because it's permanent dye. At least I'm going to clarify this with her because it's, that's like my, my thing. Like when I'm traveling, I just don't want to be like staining everything that I come into contact with. That feels, that feels, ugh. um, having all my hair fall out feels kind of it too. But so that's why I'm, I'm in that like, Hmm, does the red hair spark joy? It does. Does the, um, staining everything spark joy? No. So I guess if we can come up with the solution that my hair doesn't fall out and it's red and it doesn't stain everything, will be bueno. If not, I don't know what color I'm going to come out with. Um, it could be weird. I may end up having to cut it all off, but that can be okay. Cause that'd be fun. And my hair grows really quick and it'd be something new and different. But, um, 
when I just asked that question, does it spark joy? That is from Marie Kondo. And if you're not familiar with her work, one of my favorite, favorite books is The Magic Art of Tidying Up. Um, I am a reformed uh, clutterholic and sometimes I can get back into that habit. When, especially, the main thing for me is books. But um, her book, The Magic Art of Tidying Up, talks about going through all of your possessions and deciding whether or not to keep them based on whether or not they spark joy. They, you know, like, what if you have this functional, I think she talks about someone who has like a really nice stereo, but it had a crack where it was like a boyfriend threw something at it. So every time she looked at it, even though it was nice and stuff, she would remember that anger. And so it felt bad for her to keep that. So it didn't spark joy. So she gave it to someone else who had no no feelings about the crack in the stereo because they didn't know it was made by an angry boyfriend throwing something across the room. So I try to employ that in my life, especially if I'm cleaning out something, does it spark joy or not? And sometimes it's dicey because like I look at all the art things that my kids did. Here's my tip for that. I just started taking pictures of them and I have like a folder that I put pictures of each of their art projects. So unless it's super special, I don't save all of them because I've got four kids and I would have so many, so, so many art projects to keep, but that way I can have the, that folder and that sparks joy because I can look through it, but I don't have to find a box in the attic to put it. And honestly, like if I were going to like want to look at some of the stuff my kids did, it, I think it's easier to find in a digital file than to dig it out of the attic because when you got four kids, <laughs> you get a lot of art. Hey, Kimberly. Um, so just checking my time. I don't want to be late going in. Um, so that's kind of how I, um, look at decluttering, but I try to look at that like in everything in my life. And sometimes we have to look beyond just that very moment of like, will eating like the food I eat, will it spark joy? Or like if I take a nap, will it spark joy? And here's the thing, the actual action is, is like, it doesn't, there's no right answer every time. Like sometimes eating the cookie is going to spark joy and sometimes it's going to give you a stomach ache. And you have to tune in and listen to your own higher self in order to know what that right answer is. I think most of the time we always know, but we kind of lie to ourselves and tell ourselves a story about whether or not um, something is aligned just because we might want to do it. But we have to like think through to the, to the end. Um, the end result, like if we eat a certain food, are we still going to feel good? Like if you have gluten intolerance and you think that it's going to spark joy, you're probably not thinking through all the way to the end. Um, just like, but some days for me, um, like taking a nap, it's not usually aligned, but some days I know that I'm just really tired. I didn't sleep well and taking a half an hour nap, I get up and I'm great. Some days, um, if I might say I'm tired because I am avoiding doing something or resisting doing the work that's there for me to do. So if you're in that kind of spot where you don't know if something is the right thing, something is aligned, take it through to bedtime. At bedtime, if you did this thing or didn't do this thing, how are you going to feel about it then? Is when you look back on your day, is it going to give you joy that you did or didn't do this thing? So for me, I've been hesitant about the hair salon, but I have to remember it's only hair. And so what happens? It looks really crazy right now. Um, and hopefully it'll look beautiful when it's done and whatever color it comes out to be, um, I'm sure it'll spark joy. And if not, I'll just cut it all off. <laughs> All right, guys, have a, oh, wait a minute. I just did want to actually share something with you really quick. Two, two things, actually. Um, I do have the Moon and Magic Planner. It's probably backwards here, but I, the thing that I want to show you, it won't matter if it's backwards because it's a sigil that my daughter made. There's a couple of them in the book. There's this one. This one is an abundance sigil. And then there's one that's my favorite that's based on the, um, statement of 
when I dance my ancestors dance with me and I just love it I have the original that she did so uh oh I'm in low network collection so if you're here um, hopefully I will come back but I think it's still recording um, so what I wanted to share though is that my daughter and I were teaming up to teach a class on sigils now these are painted sigils so they are quite fancy but you can do very very simple line drawing sigils and you can also use tons of sigils um, from um, like from you can use angel sigils and you can use Salamaic key sigils and you can use alchemy sigils there are so many sigils out there from history that have been created that have been used and so my daughter and I are going to teach a class we're going to teach you all about the history of sigils we're going to teach you all about how to create and activate your own sigils or to activate and work with sigils that are created by other people so um, there's going to be a ton 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 of information in there and I'm gonna put it put a link to it so if you want to find out more about it um, we'll see if I can find okay my that's why I'm having issues my internet died okay where did my Wi-Fi die I'm going to see if I can link it on my phone. Quiz my Wi-Fi died. Um, okay. Let's see. Sorry about this, guys. Okay. We, there will be a master class with the sigils that will be live and there will be some audios for you to work with to use to um, activate your sigils and let's see aha here I am so I'll put that in the comments for you and I'm also going to put a link if I can find it really quickly for the planner if you're interested in the planner um, this is the planner that I dreamed about forever and could never find so I finally just decided to make one um, and after three years of dreaming I got it done and so this planner has all it goes by the moons it has all of the um, has the 13 moons of 2019 and not the um, months so you'll see that there are moons there even though it's backwards you can kind of see the moons around the day and each you'll turn to a new moon um, on the new moon and so why can I not find that um, link well I'm going to add that in in just a moment I'm gonna get ready to head in and um, find out what kind of hair color is gonna spark joy for me today um, go throughout your day and check in on the things that you're doing and whether or not they you're j taking those actions from fear or from joy and when you can choose joy all right have a magical day and I'll talk to you soon